All right, so um, we're going to finish up the cumulative review packet. All right, remember, it's a great resource to help you um, if you are confused. Uh, I'm going to start off with question number eight. Um, in question number eight, the first question asks, what is the largest set of numbers in the real number system? And you should have real numbers because they encompass every single subset of numbers here, okay? Um, that means the smallest subset is going to be natural numbers. Remember, natural numbers are those counting numbers, not including zero. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., etc. Um, lists the subsets from least, from greatest to least. All right, well, if you look down here, they're actually in order for you. Okay, so you can just move backwards. So it's going to be real, real, irrational, rational integers uh, whole and natural I'm sorry if you can't read that I'm doing my best here all right so we're just moving backwards up this list okay so given this set of numbers um, list of numbers that are natural remember natural are those counting numbers not including zero or any negatives so my only natural number here is 12 all right, whole numbers are the counting numbers, including zero. So it will be zero and 12. Integers are whole numbers, natural numbers, and counting numbers, including negatives. So I'll have negative eight, zero, and 12. All right, rational numbers, remember, are any numbers that can be written as a ratio, all right, or as a fraction, okay? So not only I'll include negative 8 as well, negative 8, I'll include 0. Negative 8 could be negative, you know, negative 16 divided by 2. 0 could be 0 over any number. Um, 2 thirds, 2.3 repeating. Remember, 2.3 repeating is 2 and 1 third, okay, and then 12. All right list any irrational numbers okay well it's just the rest the ones that are root seven and five point oh one oh one one oh one 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 dot 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 they're numbers that cannot be written as a fraction okay um, real numbers are all of them all All numbers, all right, all the numbers listed, okay? Um, all of these right here, the, all of these, all, 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 here we go. Um, next thing, we're going to talk about translating into an algebraic expression, okay? This is from 1.8, um, half of the difference of a number and five. So let's break this down. You have half, all right? And then you have the difference of a number and five. Well, I know difference means subtraction. A number means a variable, so the difference between number and 5 is going to be x minus 5. Okay, This half can be written as two ways. I want to take half of this expression, so I can either divide that all by 2, or I can multiply it by 1 half. Half of the difference of a number and 5. All right, next one, okay, so sum, sum right away, I know that's addition. So I have the sum of three, oh, and the quotient, quotient means division of x and seven. So the quotient of x and seven is going to look like x over seven. And the sum, that means I'll have addition, of 3 and this quotient, so 3, 3 plus x over 7. All right, so here's my sum, the sum of 3 and the quotient of x and 7. The next one, we have the sum, number 11, we have the sum of three consecutive in even integer integers. Excuse me, remember this was kind of confusing. Um, 
I'm just going to throw out three integers here. I got two, four, six. They're all even numbers. Remember, even numbers are always going to be two units apart. So if my first even number is x, the second even number would be two units apart from my first one, so x plus 2. The third even number will be two units from my second even number, but four units from my first even number, so x plus 4. And then we know that sum means addition, and is means equals 24. And then solve it from there. Combine the like terms. 3x plus 6 equals 24. 3x equals 18. So x is 6. It says find all the integers. So my first integer is 6. My second integer would be 8. My third integer would be 10. Okay. 28% of what number is 56? All right, so you can set this up a couple different ways. I'm going to choose the easiest way I know how. So 28, remember all percents are out of 100. I'm trying to figure out 28% of what number is 56. So I don't know the number, but I know 56 is 28% of that. Okay, so you could do, you could set it up like this, cross multiply, and get 28x equals... 5,600, so x would be 200. Now there are a bunch of different ways you could have done that. I just chose to do it this way. Whoever you got there, you know, that's fine. Um, what percent of 120 is 33? So I could do, again, I could do this two ways. I could set it up similar to number 12, or I could just do 33 over 120, and then whatever that is, and multiply it by 100. And you get 27.5%. All right. There we go. 14, solving for x. All right, we have a lot of variables going on here. Okay, so what I want to do here is get every single term with x on one side and all of the other remaining terms on the other side. So I'm going to choose to move this x, y to the left and move the 5n to the, to the right. So I'll have 2x minus x, y equals m minus 5n. All right, the reason I want to get all the x terms on one side, well, I have two x terms. I'm going to take out a greatest common factor and isolate my x to make it 2 minus y equals m, m, dash m, m minus 5, m. All right, so to get x by itself, well, you just divide by 2y, 2 minus y. Divide by 2 minus y. So x equals m minus 5n over 2 minus y. Yes. That's fun stuff. All right. All right. We are cruising here. Okay, all right, let's talk about number 15. Number 15, so the price of a new car, including a 6% sales tax, is $17,362.80. What was the original price before the sales tax was added? So we are including the sales tax. So a lot of times when we do these types of problems, we're saying a, you know, a discounted price. There was 20% taken off of a price there's 20 percent let's say you know we had we bought this shirt that was twenty dollars after 20 percent was taken off of it okay well now we are including the sales tax so we want to add that to our original price whereas before we were subtracting from our original price so if we think about as x is my original price original no price okay i want to include this six percent so i would do x plus 0.06x equals 17362.8. Uh, you could also just skip this step and go right to 1.06x equals 
I just wanted to show you how I got there. All right, and divide by 1.06, and you should get x to be, I think it's 16, 380 doll hairs. There we go. Boom. All right. Wow. So now you can go like shopping and figure out, oh, what was the original price? You know, that's pretty neat. Here we go. 16a. Um, right using interval notation. Okay, so x is less than or equal to 6. Remember, if it's less than or equal to 6, I'm going to include every single number to the left of 6. Okay, that was all of my negative numbers. So I want to include negative infinity all the way up to 6. And if it's equal to, it's an inclusive, it's a hard close, it's a bracket. All right. Write the following interval notation, or write the following interval as an inequality and graph on a number line. All right. So remember, if it's a parentheses, it's a soft close. That means I do not include the negative 5. Bracket means I include negative 1. Looks like that. Okay. Graph on a number line. You don't have to include numbers in between. All right. So I'm going to go negative 5. Open circle because I don't include negative 5. Close circle because I include negative 1. And shade in between. There we go. All right, uh, rewrite using absolute value, okay? Remember, distance is always measured, is always going to be a positive number, okay? So that's why we have to take the absolute value. Um, the distance from x to negative 7 is no more than 3. So absolute value of x minus negative 7, so plus, is no more than. So that means 3 is the most it can be. So I'm going to include 3 and everything less than 3. Or... You could write it as 7 minus x is less than or equal to 3. Either way it would work. All right. Here we go. 17, a distance problem. All right, so I'm going to use d for distance and t for time. A gazelle is grazing when he notices a cheetah is in his proximity. The gazelle takes off at 45 miles per hour. That's important to avoid the cheetah. Unfortunately, two minutes hmm, later, the cheetah notices the gazelle and races along the same path at 60 miles per hour. Make sure to look at the units given before making your equation. That's very important. So notice how our rates are in miles per hour, but our cheetah leaves two minutes later. Okay. So to make our lives easier, we're going to convert everything from miles per hour to miles per minute. A little chemistry review. Number to convert, oh, let's make that, let's make that blue. All right, so you can think of it like this, 25, 45 miles per hour times one hour over six, or excuse me, let's try that again. How did I have that? All right, times one hour over 60 minutes. Or you could just divide 45 by 60, and you would get 3 over 4. So our distance equals 3 over 4t, or 0.75. Okay. Create an equation to represent the distance the cheetah travels using the same variable. Well, I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. Maybe he's going 60 miles per hour. That's 1 mile per minute. Okay, just think about it as 60 here. So 60 over 60 would give me 1. So my D for the cheetah is going to be T. He took off 2 minutes later. So minus 2. Or 1T minus 2. Okay. 1T minus 2. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Holy buttons. All right. So I want you to graph these two equations and check the graph. All right, so here's my graph. Um, I got my two lines to intersect at 8, 6. Okay, you should have had the same. Um, remember, so let's put this in the context of the problem. After 8 minutes, the cheetah catches up with the gazelle 6 miles away from where they started. All right, remember, this is going to be our time, and this is going to be our uh, distance. All right, hopefully that helped. 
happy studying.